my revenge on my cheating wife and her affair partner, their ultimate regret. In the dead of night, I stumbled upon a secret that shattered my world. My name is Jonathan, and this is the story of how my perfect life crumbled. It's a tale of betrayal, heartbreak, and a quest for revenge that consumed me. When I discovered my wife Clara's affair with my best friend Alex, it felt like a nightmare. But this was no dream. It was a harsh reality. Follow my journey through the emotional turmoil of dealing with deceit, the complexities of love lost, and the dark path of retribution I chose. Each chapter peels back a layer of this intricate saga, revealing passion, betrayal, and a relentless pursuit of what I deemed justice. The red lace in Alex's car was the first crack in the perfect illusion of my life. I never imagined I'd find myself in this situation. That night, a simple discovery turned my world upside down. The chapter ahead will take you through the initial shock and the whirlwind of emotions that followed. It's the beginning of a journey filled with pain, disbelief, and the seeds of vengeance that started to take root in my heart. Chapter 1 Shocking betrayal. Husband finds wife's lingerie in friend's car. You know, life has a funny way of throwing curveballs when you least expect them. I'm Jonathan, by the way. Just an ordinary bloke, really. I've always believed in doing things the right way. Work hard, love your family, and stay true to your word. That's how I've lived my life. And that's how I thought my life with Clara was. But as I'm about to tell you, things aren't always as they seem. It was a Thursday, just an ordinary day, or so I thought. I was heading home early from work, planning to surprise Clara. We'd been married for fifteen years, and I still got butterflies thinking about her. But that day, my world turned upside down. I remember pulling into our driveway and seeing Alex's car parked outside. Alex, my mate since uni days, the kind of friend you'd trust with your life. He was helping Clara with some garden project or so they said. I never thought twice about it. Why would I? Clara was my rock, and Alex was my best mate. But that day, something felt off. I walked into the house, calling out for Clara, but there was no response. The silence was eerie. I wandered out to the garden, expecting to find them laughing over some plant or another, but they weren't there. That's when I noticed the back door of Alex's car slightly ajar. Curiosity got the better of me. I thought maybe he'd left something for me, a surprise or a silly joke gift. We always did that sort of thing. But what I found was no joke. There, on the back seat, was a piece of lingerie. Not just any lingerie, but a piece I recognised instantly. It was Clara's, a special anniversary gift from a couple of years back. My heart sank. I felt this cold, numbing sensation wash over me. I stood there, holding that delicate fabric, my mind racing with a thousand thoughts. Was I being paranoid? Was there a logical explanation? I wanted to believe there was. But deep down, I knew. It was like all those years of trust and love were shattering around me. I put the lingerie back, carefully, as if it was a fragile piece of evidence in a crime scene. I didn't confront them. I couldn't. I needed time to process this, to understand why. Why Clara? Why Alex? Why me? I went back into the house, still eerily quiet, and made my way upstairs. I needed to see Clara to look into her eyes and find some hint of guilt, some sign of the betrayal I'd just uncovered. But she wasn't there. The bed was neatly made, the room untouched since the morning. It was like a scene from a life that no longer existed. I sat on the edge of the bed, my mind a whirlwind of emotions, anger, sadness, disbelief. I thought about confronting Clara, demanding answers. But what would that do? It wouldn't change what had happened. It wouldn't heal the wound that was now gaping open in my chest. That's when the idea first came to me, revenge. Not the loud, violent kind. No, I wanted something more subtle a revenge that would make them feel the depth of the pain they'd caused me. I wanted them to regret their actions, to understand the magnitude of their betrayal. 
I started to plan right there, sitting on the edge of our bed. I'd play the dutiful husband, the oblivious friend. I'd watch them, learn their secrets, their lies. And when the time was right, I'd strike. They wouldn't even see it coming. As I sat there, lost in my thoughts, I heard the front door open. Clara's voice called out, cheerful, unsuspecting. Jonathan, are you home early? I took a deep breath, steadying myself. The game was about to begin. I'd be the perfect husband, loving, caring, until the moment of revelation, until the moment they realized they'd underestimated me. I walked down the stairs, each step feeling heavier than the last. Clara was there, smiling, beautiful, a picture of innocence. There you are, she said. I was just out with Alex, planning the new garden layout. You're home early, is everything all right? I forced a smile, hiding the storm raging inside me. Everything's fine, love. Just thought I'd surprise you. But as I looked into her eyes, I knew the real surprise was yet to come, and it would be a shocker. This is chapter one of a six-part short story. If you don't have time to watch or listen to all six chapters right now, why not subscribe to The Romance Diaries on YouTube and check back later, or simply stay tuned for chapter two? I transformed from a loving husband into a master of deception, all in the name of truth. Betrayal turned my love into suspicion, and I found myself plotting to uncover the full extent of Clara and Alex's deceit. This chapter is about the trap I set, a plan so cunning it could have been ripped from a spy novel. Join me as I delve into the art of deception, laying a web to catch the two people I never thought would betray me. Chapter 2 Sneaky Husband's Genius Trap for Cheating Wife and Her Lover You know, they say revenge is a dish best served cold. I never really understood that saying until now. It's about patience, about waiting for the perfect moment to strike, and that's exactly what I plan to do. After that day, the day I found Clara's lingerie in Alex's car, I was a changed man. On the outside, I was the same Jonathan, loving husband, good friend, the bloke who'd lend you a fiver and forget to ask for it back. But inside, I was brewing a storm, plotting my revenge. I started by getting closer to Alex. It was a risky move, but I needed to know my enemy. We started meeting up more, just the two of us, grabbing a pint at the local or catching a football match. He was none the wiser, just happy to have his mate around more often. Little did he know I was studying him, learning his habits, his weaknesses. With Clara, I played the part of the doting husband. I brought her flowers, cooked dinner, listened to her talk about her day. It was all an act, but I needed her to believe that everything was normal, that she had nothing to worry about, and she bought it, hook, line and sinker. But the real genius of my plan was in the subtlety. I started planting seeds of doubt in both their minds. With Alex, I drop hints about Clara, little comments about how she seemed distant lately, or how I'd noticed her texting someone a lot. Nothing too obvious, just enough to get him thinking. With Clara, I was even more subtle. I'd be overly attentive, then suddenly distant. I'd make offhand comments about trust and loyalty, watching her reactions closely. I could tell it was getting to her, this constant push and pull. She was starting to unravel, and I was there to watch every moment of it. But the real turning point came one evening when I was out with Alex. We were a few pints in, and he was starting to open up. He started talking about this girl he was seeing, how he wasn't sure about her, how he felt like she was hiding something. He didn't mention Clara by name, but I knew he was talking about her. That's when I knew my plan was working. They were both starting to feel the pressure, the guilt, the paranoia, and I was there, the puppet master, pulling the strings. But I wasn't done yet. I needed to up the ante to really drive the point home. So I started leaving little clues around the house, things that would make Clara question her own sanity a misplaced item here, a moved piece of furniture there. Nothing major, just enough to make her think she was losing her mind. And it was working. Clara was becoming more and more agitated, more paranoid. She was starting to slip up, to make mistakes. 
And I was there, watching, waiting for the perfect moment to reveal everything. But as I watched her unravel, a part of me started to feel guilty. This was the woman I loved, the woman I'd spent 15 years of my life with. Was I really willing to destroy her, to destroy us, for the sake of revenge? I pushed those thoughts aside. I had to see this through. I had to make them pay for what they'd done to me. So I waited, biding my time, until the perfect moment presented itself. And when it did, I was ready to strike. This is chapter two of a six-part short story. If you are enjoying this story, please show us some love by hitting the like button. Please stay tuned for chapter three. In my quest for revenge, I became an unexpected player in a game of seduction. The lines between right and wrong began to blur as I used temptation as a tool for revenge. This chapter explores the complexities of desire and manipulation, revealing how my plan to ensnare Clara took an unexpectedly steamy turn. It's a tale of passion, betrayal, and the lengths one will go to for retribution. Chapter 3 Erotic Revenge Husband's Tempting Trap for Cheating Wife The game of revenge, I'd learned, was like walking a tightrope. One wrong step, and everything could come crashing down. But I was determined. I had to be. This wasn't just about getting even anymore. It was about reclaiming my dignity, my self-respect. And so, I continued to weave my web, setting the stage for the ultimate trap. I started to change things up a bit with Clara. I became more adventurous, more spontaneous. I'd surprise her with weekend getaways, romantic dinners at fancy restaurants, and gifts that I knew would catch her off guard. I could see the confusion in her eyes, mixed with a flicker of guilt. She was struggling to keep up with this new version of me, this man who was both familiar and yet so different. But the real twist came when I suggested we try something new in the bedroom, something daring, something we'd never done before. I could see the shock on Clara's face, but there was also curiosity, a hint of excitement. She agreed, hesitantly at first, but then with more enthusiasm as I described my plans. I had everything set up perfectly. The mood lighting, the music, the silk sheets. It was like a scene from one of those steamy romance novels Clara loved to read. I watched her as she entered the room, her eyes taking in every detail. She looked stunning, and for a moment I remembered all the reasons I had fallen in love with her. But this wasn't about love, not anymore. It was about power, about control. I wanted her to feel vulnerable, to feel the same sense of uncertainty that I'd been living with since discovering her affair. As the night progressed, I could see Clara losing herself in the moment. She was responding to me in ways she hadn't in years. It was exhilarating, intoxicating. But beneath it all, there was a cold, calculated purpose. I was leading her down a path, a path that would ultimately lead to her undoing. I introduced a blindfold, telling her it would heighten her senses. She hesitated, but then allowed me to tie it gently around her eyes. I watched her, her chest rising and falling with each breath, completely at my mercy. It was a powerful feeling, but also a dangerous one. I had to remind myself to stay focused, to remember why I was doing this. I whispered in her ear, telling her to let go, to trust me. And she did. She surrendered to the experience, to the sensations I was creating. I had her exactly where I wanted her. But then, something unexpected happened. As I watched her, lost in the throes of passion, I felt a pang of guilt, a twinge of regret. This was Clara, the woman I had vowed to love and cherish, the woman who had been my partner, my confidant. What had we become? I shook the thoughts away. This was no time for sentimentality. I had a plan to execute, a point to prove. I continued, pushing the boundaries, taking her to the edge, and then pulling her back. It was a dance, a dangerous, seductive dance. And then, at the height of it all, I stopped. I removed the blindfold and looked into her eyes. There was confusion there, a sense of loss. I told her I needed a moment, that I would be right back. 
I left her there, alone in the darkness, waiting. I went downstairs, my mind racing. This was it, the moment of truth. I had set the trap, and now it was time to spring it. I picked up my phone and dialed Alex's number. It was time to bring him into the game. Alex, mate, I said when he answered. I need to see you. Now. It's about Clara. There was a pause, and then a hesitant reply. All right, Jonathan, I'll be right over. I hung up the phone and went back upstairs. Clara was still there, waiting. I told her I had a surprise for her, something that would change everything. And as I heard Alex's car pull into the driveway, I knew that everything was about to come crashing down. The trap was set, and there was no turning back now. This is chapter three of a six-part short story. If you would like to experience your own real-life romance, possibly not exactly like this one, please visit our sponsors in the description below. Stay tuned for chapter four. The moment of truth was a merciless floodlight, exposing every lie and deceit. The confrontation was inevitable. In this chapter, I confront Clara and Alex, laying bare the lies that had poisoned our lives. It's a raw, emotional account of betrayal, confrontation, and the shattering of the life we once knew. The truth, when it finally came out, was as painful as it was liberating. Chapter 4. Cheaters Beware. Husband's Ultimate Exposure. The night air was thick with tension as I awaited Alex's arrival. Clara, still upstairs, was a mixture of anticipation and confusion. I had told her to wait, that I had a surprise. Little did she know, the surprise was not for her alone. Alex arrived, his face a mask of concern and confusion. Jonathan, what's going on? You sounded serious on the phone. I led him into the living room, my heart pounding in my chest. Sit down, Alex. We need to talk. He sat, his eyes searching mine for answers. I took a deep breath, steadying my nerves. This was it, the moment of truth. Alex, I know about you and Clara, I began, watching as his face drained of colour. I know about the affair. For a moment, there was silence. Then Alex started to stammer, to deny, but I cut him off. Don't bother lying, Alex. I've known for a while now. I've seen the texts, the secret meetings. I even found Clara's lingerie in your car. The look on his face was one of utter shock and betrayal. He tried to speak, to explain, but I wasn't interested in his excuses. I had heard enough lies to last a lifetime. And you, Clara, I called out, knowing she was listening from upstairs. Did you really think you could betray me like this and get away with it? There was a moment of silence, and then Clara appeared at the top of the stairs, her face a mask of shock and guilt. She slowly descended, her eyes never leaving mine. Jonathan, I... I can explain, she began, but I held up my hand to stop her. Save it, Clara. I don't want to hear your excuses. I don't want to hear your lies. I just want you both to know that I know, and I want you to understand the pain you've caused me. The room was heavy with emotion, with guilt and regret. Clara was crying now, tears streaming down her face. Alex looked like he wanted to disappear into the floor. I trusted you both, I continued, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside me. I loved you, Clara. And you, Alex, you were like a brother to me. How could you do this to me? There were no answers, only silence and the sound of Clara's sobs. I looked at them both, at the people I had once considered my closest allies, and felt nothing but disgust. But I'm not going to let you destroy me, I said, my voice rising with determination. I'm not going to let you ruin my life. I'm going to move on, to find happiness without you. And you'll both have to live with what you've done, with the knowledge that you betrayed someone who loved you. I turned to leave, to walk away from the wreckage of what had once been my life. But then Clara spoke, her voice barely a whisper. Jonathan, please, I'm so sorry. I never meant to hurt you. I stopped, my back still turned to them. It's too late for sorry, Clara. 
It's too late for anything. And with that, I walked out of the room, out of the house, leaving them behind. I didn't know where I was going, only that I couldn't stay there a moment longer. As I walked into the night, the cool air on my face, I felt a sense of release, of freedom. I had exposed the truth, had confronted the betrayal head on, and now I was free to start over, to rebuild my life on my own terms. But as I walked, I couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness, a sense of loss. I had loved Clara, had believed in our life together, and now that life was gone, shattered by lies and deceit. I didn't know what the future held for me, but I knew one thing for sure. I would never let anyone hurt me like that again. I would be stronger, wiser, more guarded, and maybe, just maybe, I would find happiness again. But for now, I walked alone, the night my only companion, the stars my only guide. This is chapter four of a six-part short story. We would love to know what you think of the story, so please let us have your comments and feedback. Stay tuned for chapter five. As our marriage crumbled, I watched the woman I loved transform into a stranger. The aftermath of the confrontation was a landscape of emotional ruin. This chapter delves into the heart-wrenching aftermath, the pain of a love lost, and the harsh reality of a relationship destroyed by betrayal. It's a poignant reflection on loss, regret, and the irreversible damage caused by infidelity. Chapter 5. A Marriage in Ruins. The Cheating Wife's Downfall. The days following the confrontation were a blur. I moved through them like a ghost, my mind a whirlwind of emotions. The house, once filled with laughter and love, now felt like a tomb, silent and cold. I couldn't stay there, surrounded by memories of a life that no longer existed. So I packed a bag and left, seeking solace in the anonymity of a small hotel in the city. As I sat in that nondescript hotel room, the reality of my situation began to sink in. My marriage, the cornerstone of my life for the past fifteen years, was in ruins. The woman I had loved and trusted had betrayed me in the most painful way possible, and Alex, my best friend, had been her accomplice in deceit. The sense of betrayal was overwhelming, a constant ache in my heart. I tried to distract myself, to focus on work, on anything that would take my mind off Clara and Alex. But it was no use. Everywhere I looked, I saw reminders of them, of the life we had shared. I felt like I was drowning in a sea of grief and anger. Days turned into weeks, and still I couldn't shake the feeling of loss. I missed Clara, despite everything. I missed the way she laughed, the way she'd curl up next to me on the sofa, the way she'd look at me with love in her eyes. But those memories were tainted now, poisoned by her betrayal. I thought about confronting her again, demanding answers. But what was the point? It wouldn't change what had happened. It wouldn't heal the wound that was now a permanent part of me. And then, one day, I received a call. It was Clara. Her voice was hesitant, broken. Jonathan, can we talk? Please, I need to see you. I hesitated, torn between the desire to see her and the fear of reopening old wounds. But in the end, curiosity won out. I agreed to meet her at a cafe in town, a neutral ground where we could talk without the ghosts of our past looming over us. I arrived early, my stomach in knots. I hadn't seen Clara since the night of the confrontation. I didn't know what to expect, how I would feel seeing her again. She arrived, looking pale and drawn. The vibrant woman I had known was gone, replaced by a shadow of her former self. She sat down across from me, her eyes avoiding mine. Jonathan, I... I don't even know where to start, she began, her voice trembling. I'm so sorry. I never meant for any of this to happen. I never meant to hurt you. I listened, my heart heavy. Her words were a balm, but they couldn't erase the pain, the betrayal. Why, Clara? Why did you do it? I asked, 
needing to hear the answer from her lips. She looked at me then, her eyes filled with tears. I was lonely, Jonathan. You were always working, always busy. And Alex, he was there. He listened to me, made me feel wanted. It was a mistake, a terrible mistake. I regret it every day. I wanted to be angry, to lash out at her for her excuses. But as I looked at her, I realised that anger wouldn't change anything. It wouldn't bring back the life we had lost. Clara, I loved you. I trusted you. And you broke that trust in the worst possible way. I don't know if I can ever forgive you for that. She nodded, tears streaming down her face. I know, and I don't expect you to forgive me. I just needed you to know how sorry I am. We sat in silence for a long time, the weight of our broken marriage between us. And then, slowly, we began to talk. Not about the affair, but about the good times, the happy memories. It was like a farewell to the life we had shared, a final goodbye to what had once been. When we parted that day, it was with a sense of closure, of finality. I knew that our marriage was over, that there was no going back. But I also knew that I needed to move on, to find a way to heal and rebuild my life. As I walked away from the cafe, I felt a sense of peace, a sense of acceptance. The pain was still there, a dull ache in my heart. But it was no longer all-consuming. I was ready to start over, to find a new path. And so I returned to the hotel, packed my bag, and checked out. It was time to leave the past behind and step into the future, whatever it might hold. This is chapter five of a six-part short story. If you are enjoying this story, why not subscribe to The Romance Diaries, where you can enjoy other stories of love, romance, heartache, revenge, cheating and betrayal, and by clicking on the notification bell at the same time we can let you know every time we bring out a new video. Please stay tuned for the final chapter, chapter six. Revenge, once a distant thought, became the compass guiding my every move. In this final chapter, my journey takes a dark turn. I orchestrate a plan of erotic revenge, blurring the lines between justice and vengeance. It's a tale of a man consumed by the need to retaliate, leading to a climax that questions the very nature of revenge and the possibility of redemption. Chapter 6 Twisted Revenge A Scorned Husband's Erotic Retaliation Months had passed since the day I walked away from Clara and the ruins of our marriage. The pain, once a sharp, ever-present sting, had dulled to a persistent ache, a reminder of the betrayal that had upended my life. I had moved into a new flat, a modest place that was mine alone, free from the memories that haunted my old home. Work had become my refuge, a place where I could lose myself in the mundane tasks of the day-to-day, -day, avoiding the thoughts that lurked in the quiet moments. But the desire for revenge, once a burning flame, had not been extinguished. It simmered beneath the surface, a dark undercurrent that tainted my thoughts and dreams. I knew it was unhealthy, this fixation on retribution, but it was a part of me now, an indelible mark on my soul. I had kept tabs on Clara and Alex, a guilty pleasure that I couldn't resist. Social media, mutual friends, the occasional glimpse from afar, these were the tools of my obsession. I saw their attempts to move on, to rebuild their lives together, but it brought me no satisfaction. Their happiness was a bitter pill, a reminder of what they had stolen from me. And then, an opportunity presented itself, a chance for me to exact the revenge I craved. A mutual friend, unaware of the undercurrents of our past, invited me to a party. Clara and Alex would be there, a fact that was both a torment and a temptation. I wrestled with the decision, the part of me that sought closure urging me to decline, while the darker part, the part that yearned for vengeance, whispered seductive promises of retribution. In the end, the dark part won. 
I accepted the invitation, a plan forming in my mind, a plan that would bring my twisted revenge to fruition. The night of the party arrived, and I dressed with care, choosing an outfit that was both stylish and unassuming. I wanted to blend in, to be the observer, not the observed. As I made my way to the venue, my heart raced with a mixture of anticipation and dread. The party was in full swing when I arrived, the air thick with the sounds of laughter and music. I spotted Clara and Alex almost immediately, their heads close together, lost in their own world. The sight of them together was like a knife to my heart, but I pushed the pain aside, focusing on the task at hand. I mingled, making small talk with acquaintances, all the while keeping an eye on Clara and Alex. They seemed happy, carefree, a stark contrast to the turmoil churning inside me. I waited, biding my time, until the moment was right. And then, as the party began to wind down, I made my move. I approached them, a friendly smile on my face, hiding the bitterness in my heart. Clara, Alex, it's been a while, I said, my voice light, casual. They turned, surprise registering on their faces, quickly replaced by a guarded wariness. Jonathan, hi. We didn't expect to see you here, Clara replied, her voice tinged with unease. I was invited by a mutual friend. I thought it would be good to catch up, I said, keeping my tone neutral. We engaged in awkward small talk, the tension between us palpable. And then, when the moment felt right, I dropped my bombshell. You know, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, about us, about everything that happened. And I've come to realise that I'm partly to blame for what happened, I said, watching their reactions closely. They looked at me, confusion and hope mingling in their expressions. What do you mean? Alex asked, his voice cautious. I mean, I was absent a lot, focused on work. I neglected our marriage, Clara, and you, Alex, I neglected our friendship. I can see now how that could lead to things happening, I continued, my words carefully chosen. Clara's eyes filled with tears, and Alex looked at me, a mixture of relief and guilt on his face. Jonathan, I... We never wanted to hurt you, Clara said, her voice breaking. I know. And that's why I want to move past this. I want us to be friends again, all of us. I've forgiven you, and I hope you can forgive me for my part in it all, I said, the words tasting like ash in my mouth. Their relief was palpable, the tension melting away as they embraced my offer of reconciliation. We talked for a while longer, the conversation easier now, the barriers broken down. But as I left the party, a smile on my face. My heart was cold, my mind racing with the next phase of my plan. This was just the beginning, the first step in my twisted revenge. I would draw them in, make them believe that all was forgiven, that we could be friends again. And then, when they least expected it, I would strike, shattering their illusion of happiness, exposing the fragility of their relationship. I would be the architect of their downfall, the master of their fate. It was a dark path, one that I knew would lead to more pain, more heartache, but I couldn't turn back now. The desire for revenge was too strong, too ingrained in my being. As I walked home, the night air cool on my skin, I felt a sense of power, of control. I was no longer the victim, the betrayed husband. I was the avenger, the one who would have the final say. And with that thought, I stepped into the darkness the future uncertain, but my resolve unwavering.